If you listen close the next time you are camping in Arizona or New Mexico, you might hear the unique calls of a group of predatory mice. So these are grasshopper mice. They get their common name because they eat grasshoppers. Our lab is interested in animal communication and animal behavior, particularly in mice and other rodents that produce sound in atypical ways. We recently discovered that these mice produce sound just like humans do. They have vocal fold vibrations just like we do, compared to other mice that normally when they produce their ultrasonic sounds, they're just whistling. We bring them back to the lab and we can breed them and study them in under more controlled settings. We've developed a large arena that is outfitted with uh, microphone arrays that allows us to understand in a more natural spatial context the communication system. These are coolers we developed to basically study the, the sounds of mice in, in isolation. They're outfitted with a, a microphone and then a speaker that we can play back different types of sound. It gives us a degree of control, understanding natural rhythms in their sound production in the absence of any other social input and social stimuli. What is the function? What is the, the context? What is the hormonal and physiological mechanisms that allow them to use their voice, sing their sound? That is making us think about what other types of modalities they use. Studying the mechanics of these sounds could also lead to the development of treatments for certain vocal disorders and hearing loss, both in grasshopper mice and humans. So we're interested in understanding in the mice how their voice changes as they age, what happens if they overuse their voice and blow out their voice, and is there any um, particular treatments that we can uh, use in the mice to, to restore their voice and some of those findings might be applicable to, to humans. There's a lot of singers, they lose their voice. I think Adele actually is, is not touring right now because of that. We have collaborations with other faculty on campus uh, where we're starting to look at other aspects of the, of the biology of these mice, in particular their hearing. We know that if we can restore their hearing or prevent hearing loss, that also might help them maintain their voice because we often use auditory feedback to modulate aspects of our voice. Potentially, if you can restore one aspect of their sensory lives, you might be able to restore another part. So if you are around the campfire, listen for the songs of the grasshopper mouse.